every gangster that don't go on the streets, no matter what continent, what state, what city you from, you always envision your own death or somebody cutting you down while you committing a crime. I would be laying in my bed sometime, looking up into the ceiling, and it gives me the view that my assailant has cut me down as he walks over me with his smoking gun. I utter my last words before he pulls the trigger and I leave this physical existence that I call a body. You know, anyhow, my mom used to send me on these kamikaze missions, missions to go to the store. And it was like a war zone. And the reason I say that it was like a war zone is because I always had trouble coming back home. I would have girls that would chase me two girls, they would antagonize me on the way back from the store. They would throw rocks at me. You know, I had other people on certain streets, so I had to take these alternate routes just to make a simple store run, just to make a simple store run. And during this time, I remember I met this one guy and he ended up being a psychopath in a way. You know, now I understand when they diagnose you with something in your in your head. You have to go see these psychology majors. I understand that now. Yeah, I didn't understand it as a child. But this guy, he would always, <clears throat> excuse me, this guy, he would always be, you know, laughing. <laughs> he had this little, this little eerie little laugh. When we got 16 or 17, you know, he confronted me one night. He was like, hey, I got something on my mind. And I heard you a good person to have. I, I wonder if you wanted to tag along with me. So I'm like, yeah, you know, but what he wanted to do, I knew everybody. I didn't know them personally, but if they saw me or the way I walk or my posture, they would be able to recognize me, even if I had on a mask, you understand? Anyhow, one of the guys that we was set out to rob was his actual brother-in-law. He told me, look, all you got to do is just stand outside. Me and my friends had got a shotgun out of a police car in, um, in, in Mississippi. We stole a shotgun out of a police car. The police chased us and we doubled around the projects and went back to his open, open uh, police cruiser and took the shotgun off the, off the back rack back there of, of, the, of the car. So that shotgun, he just needed me to fire a shot. So when we walked up to the door, I fired the shot and said, everybody get out. He walked in with this eerie laugh. <laughs> everybody get out. Y'all, you know, and I'm like, wow, you know, we masked up. He masked up. And I heard the guy in there, which was his brother-in-law, say, man, I know that's you. He took the mask off and still robbed these guys. So boom, he come out. When we leave, we go to a stolen vehicle. He had a stolen uh, yellow uh, Fleetwood Cadillac. We jumped in the car around the block, and we went to this undisclosed location. And when we got there, he wanted to keep all the money. And I told him, no, nah, it don't work like that. And he was like, man, I got something to do with this money. We end up drawing guns on each other. I had the shotgun to his stomach, like up in the chest area. He was standing in the bathtub and I was standing on to the side and he had his gun to my head. If the girl don't come in who house we was at and stop that, I don't know what would have happened. But I got my money and we left. Another time, I don't know how I end up back with this guy. But he used to always say, man, I ain't never going back in. I'd rather die. Before I go back in, he would always say that. That same yellow Cadillac about maybe like two, three weeks later, we went to a city a few hours away. And this man drove a hundred miles an hour going and a hundred miles an hour coming back. I'm talking about he had the pedal to the metal. And I was in the back seat like I was in a 3D movie back there saying my prayer. Cause he would always say, if the police stop us, I'ma shoot. If the, if, any, if the cops stop us, I'm shooting it out. I ain't going back to jail. Nobody in that car had driver's license. 
So anyhow, I made that a point to be my last time around him. And I always thought about what he said until one night I was laying at my mom's house and I turned the TV on and it was breaking news. This guy came up against the police. He did a robbery and he went up into the attic of his mama's house. He went up into the attic and one of the police tried to come in there to talk him down or whatever. And he went to shoot him. And as they returned fire, to step back outside the house, they heard a bang. And after a while, after they sent the squad up, the SWAT team up into the attic, he was up there with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So I always remember that, you know, it's a thinking man's game when you're doing whatever. But nobody can tell you, even from when we was kids, that you didn't visualize your, your own funeral. Every funeral you attend, is you, uh, you auditioning for your own. And this guy used to always say, man, I ain't never going back. I'm a whole code in the streets.